We do. Okay, we are recording. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is David Patterson. I'm the host for this session. I'm also the Dean of the Northeastern District Online Leadership Academy. Uh, first ever, by the way, in BHS, as far as a district-wide leadership academy uh, during the COVID pandemic. We are here for our chapter compliance class and our instructor is Nate Og, who is on the BHS staff as the chapter success manager. And he's a certified singing category judge and a great coach. He was up uh, working with Vocal Revolution up in uh, New Hampshire a few years ago, had mm -hmm. a great session with him. An all round good fellow who's uh, working from home in Ohio. So thank you all for coming and Nate, it's all yours. All right, thank you so much, David. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Um, it's 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 exciting to be able to uh, to join leadership academies and harmony colleges all over the country um, while wearing pajama pants. So <laughs> uh, thank thank you again for having me. I'm looking forward to to sharing some of the information that I have. Uh, uh, for 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 some of you, a lot of this will be. Uh, review for some of this. Uh, for some of you, this stuff will will be new. Um, either way, good reminders uh, for making sure that our our organizations and our chapters are in compliance with our own uh, our own governance and bylaws, but also with local regulations. Uh, um, we always, uh, as BHS staff, even even remotely. Uh, we're always reminding ourselves at the beginning of every meeting that no matter what we do, um, encouraging community singing and encouraging our singing communities is at the core of everything we do. Um, so I always remind chapters when I'm working with them on something as, um, as sometimes arduous as compliance and paperwork and tracking that um, this is all just so that we can set our, our organizations up for success. Um, so that they can truly excel uh, musically and artistically and not have to worry about the logistics uh, that go into it. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so that we can go through um, my presentation. We'll go through uh, just a few of the um, uh, of what is normally required for chapters uh, as far as compliance and, and then some also some uh, also some good best practices um, that are not normally included with our chapter compliance materials, uh, but that I think will, will benefit. Um, yeah. So as David said, uh, my name is Nathan Ogg. Uh, you can call me Nate. I am the BHS chapter success manager. I've been with them since January of this year. So as you can imagine, that was an exciting time to start working for BHS. It's been, we, we haven't had anything to talk about since then. So. <laughs> Um, if you do have any questions, uh, you are more than welcome. Why can I? Oh, there it is. You can, uh, you can email me at nog, N-O-G-G, -G, at barbershop.org. I have the coolest email there. Um, so you can email me any questions you have. Chapters at barbershop.org is on a lot, of the, a lot of the materials as well that you'll find on the website. That also comes to me and my team. Uh, so if you do have any questions that you either don't want to bring up today or during the session or that you just think about after the fact, uh, just make sure you have that email down so that you can that you can reach me and I can help you help you out. Um, if you do have questions during during this session, uh, if it's something that you think can can wait until the end, just something like a specific that we'd like to talk about, you could put it in the chat window below, or you can, um, or if it's something that's relevant to the slide, like I don't, I don't get this, or could you clarify? Just feel free to raise your hand or unmute yourself and ask. Um, I, I'm I'm pretty easy and casual on that, so. So we'll talk about chapter compliance reporting. Now there's lots of facets to this. Um, there are uh, the reporting of chapter and corporation records. That's you know, whether you're in Canada or the US, um, basically just making sure we're compliant with local regulations. Um, there's the financial reporting aspect uh, with the uh, IRS or the Canadian uh, Revenue Agency. Uh, financial review that happens on a yearly basis, basically another way for us to be accountable to ourselves and to our members. Um, we'll also look at leadership and member rosters and the importance of keeping that uh, current in the member center uh, and making sure that we're doing our elections in a timely fashion um, and how that can affect our productivity as an organization. 
Uh, and we'll also look at reporting uh, for copyright purposes for show licensing and other usage. And that's been a popular uh, topic right now with everybody doing virtual shows and wondering exactly how that needs to be licensed. Uh, we'll get a little bit into that, but we won't go completely deep dive, but I'll give you some good resources to start with. So starting with incorporations, um, yeah, all chapters, and this is this is part of our governance and bylaws, but also a requirement of all of our organizations and us that all of our subsidiaries uh, are registered. Um, this this is the rule is there to protect individual members uh, from lawsuits that uh, any kind of liability. Um, th this material can be uh, obtained through the Secretary of State or Province. Um, and and I, I've not talked to any <laughs> any chapter recently that hasn't been able to do this completely online. Uh, it can still be done with a little bit of a paper trail, but um, you will just want to check with your secretary. Do we have any? Sorry, I, I should have asked. Do we have any Canadians on here today? I know that we have some overlap. Okay, so we do. A, oh, that's right, because I heard somebody talking about Thanksgiving a month ago in Nova Scotia. So, <laughs> all right. Most uh, most of the states will require an annual renewal, um, but um, many some of them have gone to two years, some of them have gone to five year. Uh, biggest thing is making sure logging into Member Center, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, logging onto Member Center and seeing when the last one was uh, when the last one was actually obtained and uploaded, uh, and making sure that that record is is uh, is is current there. Um, Existing uh, U.S. corporations can get that certificate of continued existence. That's normally, if there is a request for it on the in-between years, that's all you would need. Again, that's normally through the Secretary of State. Um, and that, that's pretty much it. It, it, it. It's a very simple process that can be obtained through the Secretary of State's website. Um, I'm unfamiliar with the Canadian process just because of our process. Um, if, uh, but if you have any questions on that, we do. I have been working with Michael Black and a few other Canadians that have been my resource <laughs> for that if you do have uh, any specific questions to that. Going on to financial filings, and I know this is very, very exciting stuff. <laughs> um, again, this is for um, making sure that we have uploaded and that we we have in our in our uh, possession and logged into our system so that the BHS and the district officials have access to it as well. Uh, the completed IRS 990, or in the CRA, I believe it's the T3010 or T3010, I believe, unless that's changed. Uh, there, uh, last I looked, there were at least three different forms that could work or that cha Canadian chapters uh, were uploading to Member Center. Um, this is just, uh, this is the evidence of that you have actually have been filing uh, any needed taxes uh, on any revenue, even with a 5013C or a nonprofit status. Um, this will all come through your chapter treasurers. Um, what? Just a quick, let me blow up the window so that I can see all your faces. Who, who do we have here that are chapter secretaries? Any chapter treasurers? Anybody that does both? <laughs> All right, Terry. <laughs> Oops. Sorry. I, re I recently installed a ring doorbell <laughs> for security purposes, and it likes to talk to me in the middle of meetings, even though I try to mute it. So <laughs> I apologize if the if my computer starts talking. Um, there are there's a fair amount of tutorials on the on the BHS website on how to do this filing. Um, the biggest thing is staying on top of this, um, especially with uh, with our deadlines. Normally, that would be May fifteenth after every year for the U.S. chapters and June thirtieth every year for the Canadian chapters. That compliance deadline has obviously been pushed back a few times this year because um, we realize that there are some extenuating circumstances that have slowed down chapter business. 
um, and taking the foot off the gas, so to speak, on some of that. Um, so those deadlines have been pushed back to the end of this year. Um, and, and frankly, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you, uh, we've kind of removed the stick, so to speak, uh, any punitive response if our chapters are not doing this in a timely fashion because of the difficulty that they're facing. Um, the biggest thing that we want to stress is that we're here to help you with this and to not let it get past a certain uh, amount of time. We are still actually working with groups, still uh, still uploading their 2018 <laughs> tax information, um, but know that we are here to help with that. Let me get to the next slide. Any, any questions so far on incorporation or financial filings? All right, going on to financial review. Actually, yeah, actually, yes. I do have a question. Um, the, I understand that something I learned in, in our secretary class from Steve Stoyevsky, uh, no, uh, from Rob France, that uh, the, the financial review should not be, cannot be, and should not be perform, perform, filled out or done by the chapter treasurer. Is that correct? That's, that's correct. It is supposed to be, and there's there's a quite a bit more information. So we're on the financial review, um, and there's a lot more information at the, the website that I put at the bottom of this slide that I encourage you to go to. Uh, far too much to fit into one presentation. Uh, but the, yes, the recommendation is to actually have an outside person doing this other than the, the, treasurer, or the chapter treasurer. Um, again, just for an extra step of accountability. Um, but there is a list of recommended documentation. Uh, sometimes this is somebody in the chapter. Sometimes it's somebody outside the chapter or from, uh, from the district that is willing to do this. This is commonplace for organizations of our kind uh, to have somebody else outside the organization take a look at our numbers uh, and do that review. Um, but I would encourage you to go to this website um, and I, this, I will send this, uh, this uh, presentation out so that you have these links and these lists as well. So if you don't wanna like actually jot everything down at the same time, um, but um, yeah. Nate, yes, sir. Uh, let me hitchhike on that. Uh, uh, we do not have the treasurer do the uh, review, but we've been using somebody else who is on the chapter board to, to do that, who's familiar with it. Because the rest of our members haven't, have never done this before. Um, I'm reading the guide to financial review and it's talking about best practice, one or two who are not on the board of a chapter. Um, <laughs> we don't have a lot of extra members. That, and that, and that's, <laughs> that, that's why there's a little bit of an allowance to have somebody that is on the board, just preferably somebody who's not in that fiduciary, that doesn't have that fiduciary responsibility, somebody yeah, that's that, either that, that president do. or that treasurer. So um, yeah, we, we, we completely acknowledge, we know there's many chapters where every single person in the chapter is technically on the board. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> it's like, what, what do you actually delineate when it's a chapter meeting or when it's a board meeting? <laughs> um, but yeah, that's a, that's a great point. Sometimes it is going to be somebody else on the board and that's fine. Um, it can be somebody else in the chorus. I, I prefer it to be somebody actually outside of the organization entirely um, to have the best look. Um, but, and there, there's, yeah, so for transparency, for, uh, for risk mitigation, th th this, is, uh, this is beneficial. Um, it's also beneficial to just have somebody, an outside consultant. That's why we have that flexible board option as well that we have, um, we have, we can lean on the experience of somebody outside the organization that might not be biased or might not have heard all this before. So did I see a chat come in? Let me just check this. Is there a due date for the corporate status filing with BHS? Is that, or, uh, Frederick, is that, um, were you referring to the incorporation status? Yes, yes. So th those statuses are all, uh, for US chapters are all the same. It's May 15th. Um, again, this year it's all been pushed back to the end, but that's that's kind of a, it just follows uh, for both Canadian and US, it, it follows the, the federal tax deadline um, for the 990 for incorporation uh, for basically all of our compliance deadlines are the same. 
Thank you. To keep it consistent. David, go ahead. Yeah, a couple things. Uh, one, if you're going to do a chat, put it into everyone, not just privately, because then oh. we can share the chat with everyone. I can send out, I'll send that out tomorrow. Um, the other thing is, someone was asking me, why do we have to go through these filings? And, and I tell them that it's, it's part of the uh, environment that, that we're in as a nonprofit. It's, it's something that's required uh, not only by BHS to us, but it's also required of all of us because we're a nonprofit. Is that correct? Yeah, it's that's that's why it's worded. That's why it's worked into our our governance bylaws, uh, into our governing documents. Um, it, it, it's interesting. We are contact. I'm contacted almost on a monthly basis by groups outside of the BHS, uh, community choirs, community arts organizations that want to model <laughs> our accountability structure because they've run into issues in the past. They've, you know, they've had liability come back on their own members. Yep. Um, so th this, this is there to one, keep us efficient and keep us, but also to keep us protected. Um, so. Okay. Thank you. All right, membership and leadership rosters. Um, this is something, an, another deadline that's gotten perpetually pushed back um, by, the, by the pandemic. Um, but we, it, just as a review, we know that chapter elections must be held by October 15th. Um, they have to coincide with annual membership meetings. Now, the, the voting and the announcement of that, we've, we've been a little bit flexible this year be, as we haven't had in-person meetings um, and uh, you know we're allowing uh, some additional flexibility with carrying proxies um, because of people maybe not being able to get online, uh, people that not being tech savvy enough to do that. The, the big portion here that's important for our compliance purposes and our governance is that, um, that those officers, the leadership is fed into member center and that that is current by the beginning of that next year um, because it does affect how, <laughs> how we actually communicate with certain leaders. Um, there are, uh, as, as, as David, I know a few of you have been on the calls, we're getting ready to roll out a new, uh, some new updates to member center. Um, so in ensuring that we have uh, the proper, the, the appropriate leaders uh, registered and, and identified in our system will will truly affect the permissions <laughs> that you need to uh, to get in there and upload documents, to view rosters, to make changes, but also to receive communications. There are going to be some exciting opportunities with chatter groups and some some social pieces where all of the chapter secretaries in a district or or even in a division might be able to communicate back and forth with each other. Uh, and th that is all predicated <laughs> on having current information in member center. Um, a big thing that we always run into is whenever we, if, a, if an officer resigns or is replaced, actually making sure that the new person is put into that role. Now, customer service and myself are available. We can do that if you have difficulties and need to make changes, but that is all worked into the member center where you can make those changes uh, if you're in that president, secretary, treasurer roles. Uh, that you should be able to do that. Um, and that normally falls to the secretary to, uh, to replace and, and to ensure that the, the incoming roster is, is correct. Again, um, we, we look for that, um, that information, that, ne that New Year's information to be loaded in by December 15th. Uh, we know that many times they're not in necessarily installed until after the new year and that happens. Um, but uh, this, this, this allows for seamless operation going forward. And then also a, a good reminder, this will make David very happy. It is perfectly acceptable to notify the district secretary or district officials if there's been a, a change, especially a significant change. Um, the, the district officials just really love the heads up uh, if they have a new president or a new secretary that they're communicating with. So please loop them in. There are some great information at that link as well on updating your chapter or district leaderships. I know it says 2018, but it's still relevant. <laughs> Can I, uh, yes, Dave. Go ahead. Sorry, Ken. Uh, David, I, I was just for, forgive me, but I quickly went to the uh, 
you know, to the membership center. Uh, I'm concerned that we've done the reviews, but haven't n notified you about them, right? The, the Secretary of State, the financial, we've done it. I'm the Providence chapter. I've been the secretary. I'm about to be the president. And um, I couldn't actually figure out how at the website we would tell you about it or to see, hey, are we up to date? Is that something I send a note? Could you tell us how we do that? Please? Absolutely. So actually in, let me... Um... See if I can open up uh, another tab for Member Center so I could actually show you it. And it could just be my bad, David. It's been so great to have a meeting as a secretary last year. I had no idea what to do. As an incoming president, I have at least a hint. <laughs> the Thank you. All right, Kim. Which uh, which chapter did you say you were with? Providence. Providence. Let me go ahead. I'll just bring up Providence. And we can look at that together if you're okay with that. Yeah, yeah. All right. I'm gonna stop this share and share the other tab. All right, can you all see um, my member center? Okay, so th this has a, a, a little bit of extra information in it than, than you'll see because I'm in his staff, but you will normally, you will actually see your, your chapter headline. Um, if we actually come down to compliance filings and reports, you'll see the history of IRS 990 filings and the financial reviews that have been uploaded and of course the incorporation filings. Um, there is, where is it? Oh, add upload, it's, it keeps moving. So uh, up here where it says add upload new file, that's actually where we're gonna, well, why is it not working? There it is, sorry. <laughs> I'm very impatient when it comes to this. Um, and, and this, as I said, there will, as we have some updates coming to Member Center, some of this will look slightly different. We're going to try to keep as much of the aesthetic and the look of it consistent. Um, if anything, it will be easier for us to go in and upload these filings. Um, but you'll actually go in, select the file type, what kind of document you're uploading, um, and then the year that it's reporting for. Um, in some cases, this expire, uh, the expires field is really only valid uh, on the incorporation, uh, but it is nice to have. Um, and then uh, selecting, and that's, and that's it. <laughs> it all files into that one, um, that, one, uh, that one area. It'll be the same kind of situation uh, when we have the updates, but we can actually look through and see who uploaded it. Some of these are uploaded by staff. If you, you still can physically mail something in to, uh, to Harmony Hall and, and we, will, <laughs> we will upload it for you or at least reflect, um, reflect that you've submitted it. Thank you, Nate. Yes, David. And, and along that line, explain about no file because you don't have to include your, your file that you're reporting or that you filled out on Member Center if, as long as you mail it in. But if you can actually say no file on where he just was, and that's sufficient as far as compliance. It, it is. <laughs> uh, we, we, what customer service and myself have really been doing, we like to be the only ones to put in the no file. Okay. <laughs> because that means that we've received, we've received it. We've put that, we've put that file in your physical file at Harmony Hall. Um, and then we've gone in just to say, uh -huh. Hey, we have received it. Here's where we'll okay. put in no, like, Yes, you can put in no file. Okay, thank you for the correction. I did not realize that. Thank you very much. That makes more sense. All right, let me get back to... Um, all right, can you all see uh, show licensing and certificates back again? All right. All right, this is something that is not normally included with compliance 
uh, the compliance checks, and it's not in the communication that I normally send to the district officials. Uh, but this is a, a good reminder. It does fall to the treasurers and secretaries. So I thought I'd apropos to actually talk about it. Uh, so the show licensing and clearances is just another opportunity for us to really make sure that our chapter is healthy um, and legal. <laughs> um, there are several uh, several different clearances and licensings that we need to ensure that we have. Uh, done prior to the show is the BMI and CSAC clearances. That form is available on our doc center and that's submitted through the district secretary. The ASCAP licensing is done after um, your, your shows and uh, is based purely off of the attendance and the ticket revenue. Um, that's also available on doc center. Um, there are some, some uh, some varying uh, instructions for the Canadian chapters. Uh, but as far as you know, this is just like the rest of compliance. It's imperative that we stay on top of this, that we stay on top of this reporting. Um, if you have any questions on this, the best resource in the world is library at barbershop.org. That goes directly to Janice Bain, uh, who is an invaluable resource. But we've seen this again and again over the last couple months because we haven't had our traditional chapter shows, uh, but we're starting to see virtual shows, which still need permissions. Now, if you are um, if you are broadcasting or streaming a show um, on uh, on Facebook or YouTube, uh, Facebook and YouTube both have ongoing agreements with BMI and CSEC that as long as you're not monetizing um, those shows. Um, you can kind of fall under their permissions. Um, the best case scenario is to is to check all of that with uh, with Janice at, at Harmony Hall uh, before doing it. You know, we don't always, you know, uh, there are some differences if you're actually selling tickets um, and she can get into those intricacies uh, with you as well. Chapter insurance policy is another piece that is not normally included in uh, chapter compliance materials, but um, you will see, uh, you, you should be receiving um, quarterly emails from our finance team, Nick and Nello, um, with, uh, with uh, insurance uh, invoices. Um, the general liability insurance, uh, we al are always reminding chapters that this is, this is not something that's optional. Um, this is this is part of our umbrella uh, liability insurance process or insurance policy um, that protects against bodily injury, property damage. Um, it protects you <laughs> if you have multiple courses, uh, it, it, the the individuals, the districts against any third party liability claims. Um, we've we've put out some, a fair amount of uh, information uh, that. That, the, that in that policy, there's no pandemic <laughs> rider. <laughs> there's no exceptions built in. So that's where we have some updated information on our website in regards to liability for the pandemic. Um, most of the insurance companies, as we've said, are, are scrambling to evaluate, you know, uh, you know, where, where that line exists, where, where's an act of God, where's, you know, what's actually included in our liability. Um, insurance currently? Um, are there any restrictions to that? Um, our, our advice to chapters has been if, if you are going to, if you decide to meet, if you are doing, get, going to do any in-person activities, um, make every reasonable precaution um, if, as long as they don't see negligence or, uh, or malice in it, they, it, it shouldn't be an issue. But there are a lot, of, uh, a lot of specific new information on our COVID resources, which is at the top of our website right now, if you have other questions. Um, there is uh, an optional um, insurance uh, policy that some of you probably uh, do carry with your with your chapters, and that's for property insurance. If you've got uh, if you've got buildings, if you've got other uh, other equipment that requires insurance. Nate uh, Fred Moore, I have a question on the property insurance. Yeah, uh, we, we have a trailer that we use to haul risers around. Is there is that available uh, for coverage optionally through the society, or do we have to go out on our own to try and get it commercially? Uh, 
The vehicle, um, I will have to, I would have to investigate for trailer. Most of the time, uh, well, not most of the time, uh, it, vehicles, if, if you actually have uh, a truck or something that you pull with it that would be owned by the, um, by the chapter, uh, that would need its own uh, actual vehicle policy. Sometimes trailers fall under, uh, under the property and not necessarily another vehicle policy. Uh, but I would have to check um, it, it, that that can be specific to state <laughs> or, or, or province. So I would have to check on that uh, for, for you specifically. Okay, uh, if I could have one more question. To yeah. address you. I, I was a little unclear I, in terms of the compliance forms that have to be filed in, in the uh, member center. I, do those get mailed in or are they all entered online or can be the, they be done either way? So, yeah, they can be done either way. It's, pre, it's preferable that they would, um, eh, that they would be done, uh, that they would be uploaded online uh, in PDF format or JPEG, or if you, even if you take a picture of it with your phone, <laughs> um, it, it can also be done if, if you talk to customer service or if you email uh, myself, if you email ch- if you have issues with uploading it, just emailing it to chapters at barbershop.org. We can actually upload it into your pro into your online profile. Um, but there, how, however, however we can get those those forms, we're willing to do it. So if that if that's by snail mail, email, if you're uploading it, um, yeah, that any of those will work. Nate, I'd like to go back to the general liability. Uh, insurance. Uh, several people have asked me about any financial relief as far as the premium that's being um, charged to all of the chapters. Uh, I don't, you know, I don't know how it would uh, manifest itself, but we're going through, now it's going to end up being 10 months mm-hmm. of the year. Uh, and a lot of chapters don't feel they should be paying the premium as long as they're not meeting. Sure. And that, that's, a, that's a question we've received quite a bit, as you can imagine. Um, uh, unfortunately, that decision doesn't, doesn't rest exclusively with BHS. We are, we're basically the middle, uh, the middle organization that just connects our chapters as our subsidiaries to our insurance company. Now, we have talked to our insurance company a few times, and actually, we just got um, the Philadelphia Insurance con- uh, company actually just gave us, uh, or gave us this relative term, um, but returned to us a rebate of twenty thousand dollars across the society. Um, we've been we're in the process of allocating that back out to the chapters because uh, we don't want to hang on to any of that. We want to pass all that savings on. Um, let me see, Tom and Terry. I, I don't know which one of you had your hand up first, but go ahead, Terry. I have already gotten my rebate check from my insurance for 2020. I don't know, David, you must not be your treasurer. However, it was a fixed amount for the society. The society had to devy it out to the, how many chapters? 600? 671. 671 chapters. So it's like winning the lottery, but you know the entire village won. So I got that $40.49. Uh-huh. Yeah, it, it's 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 unfor- it's unfortunate that we we were we were hoping for more. We didn't know honestly. We didn't know until about three weeks ago that we were going to get any kind of a rebate because they'd flat out told us um, several times over the last <laughs> ten months that they weren't going to be offering any organizational rebates, even though we were seeing nationwide insurance and every other insurance company give rebates back to. Uh, to their auto <laughs> co- coverage and our household or a- anything else. Um, so we, we, honestly, we were, we were a tad surprised to at least get this. Um, our, our CFO, Eric Duff, has been trying to negotiate uh, for some reduced rates for 2021 um, that we can be a little bit more proactive about, and they're, they're working on that currently. Um, it, yeah, as soon as we, we heard that there was a $20,000 rebate that we were going to be getting and passing that on. And I thought that sounds great, but divided by 671, like you said, <laughs> um, uh, go ahead, Tom. Somebody just uh, said they had a, a different number than what I got or, or the, the, what uh, Terry got. Uh, I think it's based on your size, your number of active members. So take however many people are registered with BHS 
divide that number into 20,000 mm -hmm. and I hope you have enough to finish your coffee, paying for your coffee. Yeah. So, but great, yeah, great, great question. Um, again, we're, we're hoping for more relief in 2021, um, but unfortunately it was something that we weren't able uh, to offer because it, it wasn't our decision. Uh, we're, ho we're hoping that, that through some negotiation that we've been doing over the last couple of months that we can improve that situation for 2021. Just a few other, um, while we're still on the copyright um, and licensing, uh, just a few reminders um, that it is, um, <clears throat> it is against the law to reproduce any of the copyrighted works, uh, uh, recordings uh, without actually being purchased and licensed properly. Um, now, if, if you've purchased anything through Harmony Marketplace <laughs> recently, you know that that's, that's basically built in. We know uh, this is old song and dance, but it's, it's still, uh, apropos to remind everybody. Um, we don't normally have this situation with our chapters, but uh, to prepare any derivative works, um, like uh, even editing down uh, other, you know, other people's uh, copyrighted materials or recordings. Um, the big thing is that, um, that we are reminding all of our chapters is that to to perform it publicly, not just to not just to be paid for a performance, um, you still have to buy the sheet music, and that's the thing we've really been. Uh, as we see more and more virtual performances, this is this is the important thing. So normally, you normally to have of a virtual record to do a CD or any of the, anything like that, uh, you would have to have a sync license. Um, that the allowance that we've been given by the uh, by the copyright holders to do these live uh, you know virtual shows uh, doesn't, however, preclude you from purchasing the music, the sheet music to begin with. Um, there's a lot of that information in our FAQs, um, or again by talking to to library at barbershop.org. Again, another reminder, really hefty fines <laughs> for copyright infringement. Uh, we, we've, we've seen a lot of allowance lately, but we don't think that that will last. <laughs> so while, while there's, but there's been some grace exercise by copyright holders recently, I, we, we, we figured that'll, that'll catch up. So again, if you have any questions, library at barbershop.org. We talked a little bit about Member Center. Um, it will be getting a facelift. Uh, you'll start to see those changes in January uh, or probably over the over the December holiday. Um, but there are existing tutorials, um, many of them in there about how to add members to your chapter, how to update prices, um, how to uh, how how to actually file the the financial review, the financial reports, the incorporation, anything that we just showed you on Member Center. Um, those tutorials will remain. We're, we're in the process of recording new tutorials that, are, that for anything that actually changes with, with Member Center with the update. And the big thing is help is you're not on your own. Uh, customer ser our customer service team is, is fantastic. If you call them, we, we like to remind people that our customer service team is only three people. <laughs> it's only three people that are there from like seven in the morning on central time to you know 6 p.m. on um, Pacific time so that we can try to get the majority uh, of, of our members. Um, but uh, they, they are available to you. If you email them, it forwards to our entire team. If you email customer service at barbershop.org, if you're having an issue, if you do call most of the time, uh, you, you will leave a voicemail because again, only three people, everybody assumes that we have a customer service center and they just see, you know, imagine a Verizon center that has <laughs> 30 or 40 uh, customer service reps, but we just have three of them, uh, but they are unparalleled in getting back to you in a timely fashion. Um, and helping you through your issues. So uh, don't be afraid to reach out to Harmony Hall staff. You know, I talked about library at barbershop.org for any of the copywriting and permissions and licensing issues, uh, chapters at barbershop.org. And I'll go through a few of these emails in, in a moment um, on that, or just 
don't be afraid to reach out to your district officers like David, um, who are who are ready to help. Especially, I mean, his his position is district compliance officer, right, David? Yep, five dollars. Got to donate five dollars. No, I didn't start talking. <laughs> I didn't start talking. I'm sorry. Repeat your question. Also, your your actual title is is district compliance no. officer. My official title is VP for chapter support. Oh, but is, that's much better. Dot dot dot, which includes <laughs> monitoring chapter compliance. <laughs> <laughs> while we're on, while we're on the subject, uh, Diane Brooks had a question that went on chat in. She said, for compliance filings, is there a penalty for not filing? How can we strongly encourage their submissions? So again, this year, uh, for the circumstances of 2020, we've, we've removed the stick, so to speak. We've, um, the, the sti that stick being, if we have chapters that are not in compliance, that aren't, that haven't paid their insurance, that uh, don't have their leaders reflected in member center, um, if they are not current on uh, financial review, taxes, anything like that, um, you know, they are at risk of, uh, of losing their charter. Um, We've, we've been exercising a lot of grace this year because we realize the situation is unfortunate for a lot of our chapters. You have uh, technological issues, getting people, getting chapter boards and officers to connect. Um, we know that the chapter is, are, you know, maybe not meeting virtually at all. Um, and, and there are other obstacles. So we've been exercising grace in that this year. Um, but know that, um, that that punitive action that could be taken is the, is there to protect the chapter and to protect the district, um, and that sometimes those sometimes those um, those compliance requirements seem just like busy work. Um, they really are there to protect us. Um, so in um, you know, we have there have been only a handful of times in the last five years uh, talking to my team that there have been any what we call an involuntary dissolution or if we have uh, a chapter that's has, had to go basically under probation um, for not being compliant uh, with our own governance. Um, and that's really just to, again, to mitigate the risk that could reflect back on the district or society. Um, yeah, Tom. Uh, quick question going back on um, the uh, license and clearance. We did not have a show. We're not planning to have a show, so we did not do BMI CSAC. And do we need to file ASCAP for the year if we had no paid shows? ASCAP only only needs filed if there were if there was a paid show. So see you next year. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I have uh, Diane has a follow up question for any year. When would be the, a logical time frame uh, for um, uh, to incur? Uh, what, I, I lost the place here because uh, somebody for, added something. Logical time frame to submit their filing within yes. six months, um, and that and that's where um, although the 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 nine ninety deadline. Uh, is normally that uh, May 15th, just a month at, or for US chapters, uh, a month after the tax deadline. Uh, we like to encourage um, uh, that to be the deadline for the other, the other things as well. Obviously reporting your leaders, uh, your, your next year's leaders is something that needs to be done by December 15th. Uh, but we look for, um, so, so really, we would like it. We would like the chapters to be compliant with that that May fifteenth deadline of each year. I also had a question from uh, uh, Tony Hillman. Uh, should chapters contact district first for questions or go straight to BHS headquarters? If if you've got, I mean, and and, and you are fortunate to have such an active district leadership um, that is available, you can feel free to do that. Um, you know. 
where we're at your disposal, whatever you're, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, you, you don't have to feel that you have to go through a chain of command and, ch and check with district officials before you reach out to us, or that something needs to escalate before it gets to us. You can go straight to us. You can go to whoever you feel that you can connect with the best and to answer the question. Uh, but, but we're, we're all at your disposal. Okay. Fred, Fred Moore has a question. Does each paid sing out constitute a show for purposes of the ASCAP fee? <clears throat> Only ones that you've sold tickets to. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it, 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 that's... Really only applies to your chapter shows. Uh, if if you've received uh, payment, that's like uh, you know, quartets don't need to to file an ASCAP fee if they if they appear on a chapter show. It's the chapter's responsibility uh, to file that fee. Okay, but a chapter goes out into the public and performs for a fee, but as long as they don't charge for tickets, that's the distinction. Correct. Okay. And I have another warning for all of the leaders here. Make sure that you change and enter your incoming officers by the end of this year, because if all of your chapter officers have an expiry date on Member Center of 12-31-2020, and you do not change someone come January 1st, 2021, no one can go in and update your Member Center chapter leaders. Except me. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, as I said, my, my first day working for BHS, I've been a member for 12 years, but my first day working for BHS was January the 3rd. Oh. And everything that I did for the first, <laughs> for the first three weeks was, uh, was going and change chapter leaders because people had, had let that, that expire um, and realized that they had no chapter official or no chapter leader current. Yeah. <laughs> so we can do it. The customer service department can do it, uh, but it, it does help. And that's why we, we have it in, in all of our literature to, to complete that by December 15th, if possible. So yeah, Tom. Uh, if, if one of your chapter officers goes non-current, can the other, the secretary or the president go in and update? Yes. Any of the, any it's, of the, it's the it's sort of the same as if he resigned and you had to replace him, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. Okay. But if we all expire, yeah, now you, now it's your problem. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and, and we've encouraged, I mean, we know that if there are extenuating circumstances and we have a chapter that hasn't, for some reason, hasn't been able to have their, um, their elections or they have a technical issue and can't get in in the month of December and make those changes, like, go in and change one person's permissions to end January 31st of the next year instead of December 31st of the current year. Like just give one person and then you can, and then you can do it. Uh, we'd love for it to, you to actually reflect all the, all the new changes, all the new election results. But, um, but we know that sometimes that doesn't happen. But if we, if we can get one person in the chapter <laughs> as from a chapter leader that still has the permissions to go in and make those changes, it's a win. So I will share my screen one more time. This is the, um, who do I actually contact if I have issues? You're going to view all of the Barbershop Harmony, Harmony Society staff um, at, this, at, the, at the top link, um, along with, uh, I think, some short bios. And you, you should be able to see our pictures, just in case. Um, customer service at barbershop.org comes to my whole team, comes to the customer service team. Chapters comes directly to me. There's also a few other people in that box that are available if you're having issues. Um, having contacts like Marketplace, marketplace at barbershop.org if you have issues with actually purchasing that music, making sure that you have enough copies, et cetera. Um, I mentioned library at barbershop.org for our music publications team that can help you with show clearances, et cetera. The rest of them, the rest of those teams are on there really just for um, your use if, if, if they can be helpful, but for th the purposes of this conversation, I think those are the, the ones that, that would be most helpful to you. 
The big thing is don't let the compliance work pile up. Um, if, if you wait until the end of the year, um, we know that normally <laughs> we'd be preparing for holiday shows. Um, and it, it's just one of those things that if we, if we let it all pile up, you know, sometimes it takes six or seven weeks to get the financial review done. You got to find somebody that's able to do it. You got to give them the appropriate time. Um, yeah, don't wait until the last minute. Um, you know, assuming that we're able to get back to business as usual in 2021, eventually, um, we'll start to see some of those deadlines become a little bit more strict in that. So uh, help us help us by staying on top of it. I always like to remind uh, chapters and district officials that uh, chapter compliance and, and these, these things that we, <laughs> we judge against are not the only metric for chapter success and chapter health. Um, these, these unfortunately are the most objective <laughs> things that we can have. There are certainly a lot of other um, indicators of chapter health and we're working to, to kind of broaden the scope uh, as part of the Healthy Chapters Initiative to, um, to evaluate chapters, like how, you're, how are you doing with chapter shows? How uh, are you sponsoring scholarships? What, are, what, what else are you doing um, that can be an indicator um, of a good, healthy organization? Because we know that not every chapter competes. Not every chapter sponsors a scholarship. Not every chapter you know, you know, has their own harmony camp. Um, so don't be discouraged <laughs> if, 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 it look, if, you, if you look healthy in one area and are not in the other, there are other ways that, we, that we're here to support you. That's what the music education and the Harmony U teams are here for. Um, and there are, there are many chapters that may have these top four things um, completely up to date, uh, but be struggling. Um, so communicate with us, communicate with, uh, with the rest of our outreach and education staff. We're here to help. Uh, so, hey, I have another question from yeah. uh, Diane Brooks, uh, and I know the answer to this. Can a chapter have a secretary treasurer? And the answer is yes. Actually, we have one on the call. Terry mm -hmm. uh, is secretary and treasurer of his chapter. However, a president cannot be a chapter secretary or treasurer. Um, that's against the uh, non. -com that's against the. Uh, uh, that that would be in our uh, in our government's document our yeah. government's documents um, that that is one of the duels that we cannot have. Yep. But a chapter secretary and treasurer, absolutely. Yep. Mm -hmm. Good. So when I get my report for compliance, I can ignore that part then, because it's usually highlighted. Yeah, on the on the old compliance report. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That okay. is, that's there. That is correct. But it's, it's only, I think it's in yellow, uh, if I'm not mistaken, yep. where the other, other cells are in red, but it's only a, just a highlight. It's, there's nothing wrong with that. Yep. And uh, looking forward uh, to the new member center from what I got from our online uh, chat about the new member center coming up, we can create our own compliance reports rather than having to wait uh, and for BHS or for, <laughs> for Nate to get the report out. Yeah, that, that'll be something that is available in real time to, will be available in real time uh, to our district officials, but also for chapter officials. There should, we're working on actually having a dashboard <laughs> where you can just go in and take a snapshot look of your chapter health, uh, where you're at with compliance. Um, but yeah, because the, the system is a little bulky right now because we have, three or four different programs trying to talk to each other and then export it all to a form. Um, and that's why normally, yeah, you, you normally do see some highlighted fields if you have any dual officers. And the, really the only ones we, we look for are the, anybody that duels with the president um, or duels with the, yes, duels with the president. So great question. Are there any other questions? Um, you know, we've, we've been trying to offer as much as we can um, to, um, you know, to, to compensate for um, all the, the complications that we've had this year um, and exercising some grace with deadlines. Um, is there anything that has come to mind or that, uh, that you need from us or that we can offer to you? All 
All right. Well, cool. See you, see you in July. <laughs> We're, 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 we're hoping that, uh, some, that some spring events can still happen and we're hoping that uh, uh, international can still happen. Um, we are looking at, uh, actually in, in my own district, I'm in the JAD, uh, the JAD and Cardinal District are working on trying to do a, a, a collaborative spring convention. I think it'll just probably just be quartets and probably not have any, uh, any spectators, but we're going to at least try to have something responsibly and, and, and safely. So um, I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing what other creative solutions that our, our other districts and chapters are, are coming up with. So know that um, I gave you my email and I will, will I'll send, um, I'll send this presentation out to David so that he can distribute it to you. If you do have any other questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to chapters at barbershop.org. Be happy to help you with it. Okay, okay. Um, oh, Tom, Tom, go ahead. Uh, this is for Nate. Uh, David can pass it up uh, through the, the other, through the uh, district rank. A lot of chapters are using a Zoom or GoToMeeting or mm -hmm. uh, one of the other platforms that existed last year and are, have now been pressed into service. <clears throat> Problem is only one person can talk or be heard at a time. Uh, we did some digging around. Uh, we found we video where you can record, but that then you have to bring it together after the fact and, and you can present it. That's, we're seeing a lot of that coming up on uh, YouTube and other things where they've built this whole package. Uh, I, I'm doing a look, on, I've, I've got more research to do on a, a thing called J, uh, Jamulus. Jamulus. Yes, uh, which sounds like it might work for us, but I would like BHS to bring its clout to bear with some software house somewhere to create a platform where we can sing virtually and be able to hear um, each other. Uh, there may be some sort of a limit, you know, no more than a hundred, there goes vocal majority, bye guys. Uh, but for us poor, slobs in the trenches, uh, if we could do 20, 25, you know, some of the chapters are probably bigger, so they need 50. If we can do that and sing. So we, we have we been, could, we, we've been testing we a few. Elevate that to the hierarchy and say, mm -hmm. hey, the, uh, the guys out there on the, in the chapters are bugging me about David's shaking his head. Uh, no. Well, the, okay, let me tell you, uh, we've tried Jamulus. Vocal Revolution uses Jamulus and we have been using it uh, all summer for our section rehearsals and it's okay. But as far as the latency issue, that cannot be cured by a single platform because everybody's uh, connection to the internet is different. And that latency is what drives people crazy and even with Jamulus, if you get more than just a few people, um, it 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 can't handle it. And um, I don't know I don't know of anything that's um, better than that at this point. But the, the latency issue, I don't know if any single platform can cure that. So we've we've been working with a few different organizations and and businesses testing some new uh, solutions. Um, the well, as David said. There's a certain amount of latency that can never be avoided um, because there's a, there there um, there is some lag depending on how many miles <laughs> of wire <laughs> are between my house and Tom's house and David's house. Um, there are the ways that they can eliminate some of that. Um, the 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 few organ or the few software companies we've talked with that have been able to eliminate any of the extra latency um, are doing so where every single person has to be on a wired connection 
every single person has to have their own equipment and not just a microphone, but they'd actually have to have an interface. Um, and it's extremely cost prohibitive um, to the tune of two or $300 a person that has to be on every single computer uh, to, to compensate for a lot of that lag. Um, and it, and most of the most of the testing that they've done, everybody has been on like a like Google Fiber or some of the new fiber optics. Um, the minute you have anybody in a rural environment, and I'm 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 about 45 miles outside of Columbus metropolitan area in Ohio, um, and I have significantly different <laughs> different internet than they do in the city. Um, the the variance in it is is just huge. Um, there there have been significant improvements in the last six months in it, but about making it affordable um, and viable, at least to scale it out to our number of um, uh, of members is, uh, I think, a little far off, unfortunately. Um, we've, we've seen some that are able to make it work with, with quartets or small combos. Um, most, of, most of the groups that we see that are making it work um, that see, <laughs> seemingly have a good solution intact are, are the instrumental combos and that kind of thing where there's a little more, there's less, um, there, there's less uh, emphasis on sync, <laughs> on actually things happening at exactly the same time on the same vowel, that kind of thing. There's a little bit more allowance for the instrumental groups that are most of the time used as the example, unfortunately. So as Seth said, latency is physics. It's the law. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> you can't repeal the laws of physics. Yeah. But but I, I will certainly i will certainly pass that up we've we've been I, i've been harping on i'm actually on our COVID team um looking for solutions looking for uh new information um mo most of that group's effort is uh compiling information on the on the the new vaccines um and how soon that's going to be available to our communities um you know it, seemingly that looks like the solution it looks like actually Paul said, or was it Ken that said it? Yeah, um, that that's probably going to be the, the soonest solution that we see. The vaccine was going to was going to be available before the technology to to sing online. So, yeah, right. I think I think we've uh, reached the uh, the end of the session. I want to thank all of you for participating in this historic event, and thank our instructor, our guest. Nate Og from BHS staff um, for putting together a very nice presentation. The, the chapter compliance, uh, again, as I've said many times, is the responsibility of the chapter. It's not my responsibility. It's not Nate's responsibility. It's your chapter's responsibility. And if you have questions, uh, you can come to and ask me if you wish or any other chapter officer especially our secretaries and treasurer, excuse me, our district secretary, Glenn McElhoe, or our district treasurer, who is John Englander. And they, they can uh, help you with any answers that you have. I wanna, again, thank everyone. Uh, very shortly after we close this session, I will be sending out a survey. It's a five question survey with optional comments. Would you all please fill that out because that helps us when we uh, start planning our next Leadership Academy, which will probably be an online academy because of the terrific results we've had. And uh, deciding when we're going to do that, um, maybe not until January, February of 2021, now that we're at, uh, uh, getting back into, this, into the swing of things. So again, thank you, everyone. And um, Stay safe and uh, sing as much as you can <laughs> under the conditions that we have. But uh, enjoy yourselves. Thank you very much. Thank you all.